It's no question that the Adventure 5M by FlashForge is an excellent lineup of 3D printers with a dedicated following and community. Since the initial release, people in the makerspace and 3D printing community as a whole have found a huge love for the Adventure 5M. But there's one complaint that's shared almost entirely across the board. And that would be the lack of advanced firmware options and the inclusion of features like Fluid, and Mainsail, and Moonraker. But today, thanks to the hard work of the 3D printing community, we're about to fix all of that. Now, we've been here before with options like Clipper Mod and a few other things, but this is different. What we're looking at today is the absolute end game of 85M firmware. To be more specific, in today's video, we're going to be installing ForgeX by Dr. Alex. There are some very basic prerequisites to installing this firmware. The first thing we need to do is if you have installed any other third party firmware in the past, we need to make sure that that has been completely removed from your printer. Now, if you have Clipper Mod or ZMod, make sure to go to those GitHubs and download their respective uninstall images. Once you have the image loaded onto a USB drive, insert it into the printer and boot the printer to remove those prior firmwares. Now that we're stocked, the first thing we want to do is go to our settings and make sure our printer is connected to the network. Once we have our printer connected to the network, we want to make sure that we check for any available updates as being on an older version of stock firmware can introduce some weirdness to this new firmware. Now that we know that we're on the latest firmware, there's one more option. This option would be LAN only mode. And to do this, we go back to our network settings and in the very bottom left, we'll see network mode. Once in network mode, go to the top right and just click LAN only. Once you've enabled this, you're going to have a code in the bottom right of the screen. And you can safely ignore this as you don't really need that code. All we're doing here is helping to increase the stability between Forge X and the stock screen. If you've installed the optional camera or you're running the 5M Pro, you'll want to make sure to go into the screen and enable the camera before we attempt to install Forge X. But before we get into our install, let's take a second to talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. Sometimes we need a little bit of help with our ideas. PCBWay's wide range of custom manufacturing services are perfect for anybody who has a project part or idea that they've been working on. Whether you're looking for more durability or mass production, custom manufacturing has never been easier than with PCBWay. Not only do they offer custom PCB manufacturing, but services like sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, and even metal 3D printing. Not only that, PCBWay also offers industrial grade SLA and SLS 3D printing. So if you have a project you're working on and need a little bit of help, make sure to check out PCBWay at PCBWay.com. Installing Forgex couldn't be any easier. All we really have to do is go to the GitHub and download the install image. And while you're on the GitHub, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and read through it as there are some more advanced options that we won't be covering in this video. But if you don't wanna read anything, don't worry about it. We're gonna walk through the complete basic install and setup of Forgex. A quick note before we proceed with any installation process. While the process is generally pretty easy and fairly safe, neither myself nor Forgex or anybody else is liable or responsible for anything that may happen to your printer. Modifying firmware isn't for the faint of heart, and while there are always people in the community willing to help with assistance, make no mistake, FlashForge isn't coming to save you if something goes wrong. On the ForgeX GitHub towards the right-hand side, we'll see a link for releases. We want to make sure that we download the latest release image and drop it onto a blank USB drive. There's a few important things to mention here. We want to make sure that the USB drive is formatted as FAT and not NTFS or any other file types. The other thing we should mention is there's no reason to extract the firmware image onto the USB. We simply want to drop the firmware directly onto the USB. Once our drive is ready, make sure that your printer is fully powered off. Insert the USB into the side of the printer and then turn the power on. Wait a few seconds and if everything went right, then you should see four jets begin the installation process. If this process is not starting and you've gone to your stock screen, you want to check the USB to make sure that you don't have any issues with it. If you've uploaded the image to the USB and properly formatted and you're still not getting an installation screen, it's possible that you might just have to try a different USB drive. Once Forgex has started the install process, it's important that we pay attention to the screen. Now, we don't really need to do anything during this process, but it's important to watch it just in case. Once the install process has finished, you'll get the prompt to restart the machine. At this point, we want to turn off the power at the back of the machine and then remove the USB drive from the screen. 
And once we remove the USB drive and power it off the machine, this is where the fun begins. Now we can power on the machine and in a few seconds you should see 4GX begin to boot. One of my favorite things about 4GX is that it works in tandem with the original stock screen. So in a few moments, you should be greeted by the stock screen. Now that everything is up and running, if you don't already know it, make sure to go to your settings and then your network section so you can write down your IP address. Once you have your IP address, we can open a browser tab and enter it with either slash fluid or conversely slash main sale. In this video, we're going to be using fluid because it is primarily what the majority of people use. And if everything's working correctly, we should be greeted by the fluid dashboard. And notice, if you have a camera installed or are using the pro model, that you should see your camera in the panel. Now, before we do anything, we're gonna use one of the coolest features of 4 Jets, and that would be its over the air updates. Looking at the ribbon on the very left side of Fluid, we wanna go all the way down to the bottom to the gear icon or to settings. Once we're there, we wanna to go to the very bottom of that context menu and click updates. Now that we're in the update panel, go ahead and hit check for updates, and you should have a few updates that you can run. Now, it doesn't really matter what order you do these updates in, but personally, I just like to update 4GX before anything else. Now, keep in mind, once you click update on 4GX, the machine is going to be restarted. So you'll have to come back and make sure to click each update individually. After everything is updated, we're going to go back to the main section of Fluid and then go to our console. There's a few parameters that we want to make sure that we go ahead and enable so we have the best operation possible with our firmware. None of the parameters that we're going to put into the console are a requirement, but they're all highly recommended. The first of these being check MD5. The reason we want to enable check MD5 is when a file is sent from your slicer to your printer, sometimes your printer experiences some packet loss during transmission. This MD5 checks make sure that the file coming from your slicer is the file that is received on your printer. This feature ensures that there's no errors or issues in your G code. If you've ever printed a large file and just randomly it's skipped its layer and it's printing a little strange all of a sudden, this is exactly what's happening. There's some errors in the G code that the printers received and the MD5 check makes sure that this doesn't happen. The next parameter we're gonna set is Tune Clipper. The purpose of this is to correct some overflow and communication errors found within the Clipper firmware. The last parameter we're gonna do is strictly personal preference and you don't have to do it but it fixes one of the most annoying things that I deal with, with the 85M. Anytime you do a task on the 85M, there's always a dialog window. If you finish a print, there's a dialog window. If you cancel a print, there's a dialog window. If a print fails, there's a dialog window. No matter what you do, you have to stop, walk over to the printer and hit next, stop, okay, or whatever. But when we use the parameter close dialogs fast, these dialog windows are automatically shut down within 20 seconds of opening. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I finish printing, I forget to hit the OK button in the dialog menu, which means next time I'm going to print, I have to walk over to the printer and clear the dialog. Now that we've entered our parameters into the console, just as a force of habit, I'm going to go ahead and type in save config. And this is where we have to talk about something very important for 4 jets. Whenever you save config in the console for fluid or main sale, the stock screen will lock up on the 85F. But don't worry, nothing's going wrong here. This is expected behavior. The reason is the stock firmware in the screen doesn't really know what 4GX is doing. But conversely, 4GX is very aware of any changes made by the stock screen. But the problem is strictly with saving and a few other areas where the stock screen will just decide to lock up because it's not sure what's happening. To manage this situation, we just have to add one more step to our process. Normally, we would just save config and go about our business. But with 4GX, what we want to do is type in save config. And then once Clipper has restarted, we want to go ahead and just type in reboot and reboot the entire machine. And once the machine is rebooted, the stock screen will know exactly what's going on and has been changed in the firmware. Now we're about to set up our slicer to communicate with 4GX. But before we do that, let's go to the stock screen on the 85M, go to our settings, and then go to our calibration. Make sure you select all the options for this calibration and then hit start. We're going to take a few minutes to set up Orca Slicer and calibration takes a few minutes anyways. So this is the perfect time to go ahead and calibrate since we're not really going to be messing with the printer. Quick note here, there are some more advanced calibrations that you could run in Fluid and Clipper for your printer. But 
they're not really completely necessary. And the calibrations on the stock screen, for the most part, get you where you need to go. So we won't be covering the calibration in fluid and clipper today. I will, however, be doing those in another video. Cheese Forge X, we need to be running Orca Slicer and not Flash Forge's variant of the slicing software. Now, most of you are going to be using Orca Slicer, but here's a quick recap just in case. If you've just installed Orca Slicer for the first time, when it first pops up, it's going to ask you what type of printer you're using. After this, it's going to ask you to select the filament profiles that you would like to use for this printer. Make sure you scroll through and select any of the filaments that you might be using in the future. If you've already installed Orca Slicer and you don't have the 85M selected, go to your printer profiles and then go to select remove printer. Make sure that you do not hit create printer. Selecting create printer is a common mistake by people who are newer to Orca Slicer. What this is going to do is create a blank profile that will have none of the information required to run the 85M. You want to select the profile rather than create it. Once we have our profile for the 85M, we want to change our connection options. The connection options can be found directly to the right under a Wi-Fi icon. Once we've done that, we can go to our host address and then enter the IP address of the printer, followed by the port 7125. For device UI, we're going to type HTTP, the IP address of the printer, followed by slash fluid or main sale. Once you've done that, you should be able to test the connection and see that you have proper communication between the slicer and your printer. After this, you simply go down to the bottom right and hit OK, and it will allow you to save this profile. Now we need to modify the start and NG code for our printer. To do this, there is a little notepad icon next to our Wi-Fi icon, and this opens up the printer settings. Once we're in settings, we're going to be looking for the machine G code tab. At this point, we're going to completely replace the start and NG code. For the start G code, there are two options available on the GitHub, one when running the stock screen and one for running the feather screen. For this setup, what we're looking for is the G code for the stock screen. So go ahead and copy that from the GitHub and paste it directly into the start print section. Make sure you've completely removed all the prior G code and replaced it with the GitHub version. For our in print G code, we just simply need to enter end print. Now, if you're anything like me, you prefer your printer to do an automatic bed level before each and every print. Personally, I don't really care if this adds an extra two or three minutes to my total print time. Rather, I like knowing that my prints are going to have the best first layer possible. Again, this is completely optional, but if you want to add this feature directly after start print in our start print macro, we want to enter force leveling one. Before we start printing, we need to modify one more thing. We need to modify the profiles for our printing process. If you've decided to use the recommended MD5 parameter, we need to make sure that we download the script for the MD5 and then place it into our process. To do this, you need to download the script from GitHub and then place it somewhere on your hard drive where you know it's going to live permanently. Once it's there, go up into the top of your file browser, copy its location, and then bring that into Orca Slicer. Next, you want to select any of the processing profiles that you're going to be using. In the top tabs, we want to go over to Other and then scroll all the way down to the very bottom to Post Processing Scripts. Once here, we just need to paste the location of the script followed by Add MD5. Bat. Once you're done, go ahead and save the profile. Quick note, if you're running Mac or preferably Linux, you need to give the script permissions to run. The commands to do this can be found on the GitHub page. Lastly, if you are using MD5, make sure to add it to all of the process profiles that you will be using. If you followed everything correctly to this point, you should be able to bring in a file, hit slice, and send it to your printer. When it comes to firmware, ForgeX is most likely the best option we are ever going to see for the 85M. An option that wouldn't be available to the community without the hard work and effort from Dr. Alex. Because of this, I've asked Dr. Alex to put a donation page on the GitHub for all the effort that he's put into the project and anybody who would like to show their appreciation. If you're not in the position to donate to the project, that's okay. Just leave a comment down below letting him know you appreciate the work he's done for the community. Before we end the video, let me mention a few quick things about tweaking modifications and calibrations. With Clipper and Fluid, you're going to have more control over your printer than you've ever had before. And it's really easy to get yourself into trouble if you don't understand what you're doing. When it comes to the calibration and tweaking and modifications or just making adjustments to the machine, if you're not familiar with these practices, it's just best to leave it alone for now. I'll be doing two more videos for this firmware, one on any calibration or tweaking that we need to do 
for the printers. And lastly, a video for the feather screen and how to set it up and how to use it. Keep in mind, it takes a while to produce these videos, so it's going to be a little bit, but we'll get to those as soon as we can. So just stick around.